to turn my camera off and stay on mute. And okay. uh, thank you for presenting on alternatives to Scopus. Awesome. Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to the webinar Alternative to Scopus. Uh, my name is Candace Jacobs, and I'm the STEM liaison librarian. Okay. okay, so here are the main points that I'll be covering today. So I've created um, a Padlet for everyone to drop their questions in. If I'm unable to answer your questions during the session due to time constraints, please feel free to email me at ccjacobs at uncg.edu. I'll drop that in the chat. Um, or to set up a consultation with me through the appointment link listed um, in any of my liaison area research guides. So here's just an example I have here, a screenshot of what that page would look like. Um, and I'll also be filling in the Padlet with responses to the questions that I've not been able to answer during the session. So don't worry, if you have a question, it will be answered one way or another. Okay, here we go. What is it doing? Oop. There we go. Okay, so the why. So as I'm sure many of you know, the Jackson Library will be eliminating Scopus as of June 30th of this year due to budget cuts. So when that was announced, um, it made me realize how many uh, different disciplines utilized Scopus frequently. So I wanted to conduct this webinar to offer some alternatives to the common functions utilized in Scopus. So please take a few minutes to uh, utilize the QR code to take a quick survey on how you do utilize Scopus currently. Okay, so I'll give y'all just one more minute and then I'm gonna uh, read off the responses to you so we can kind of get started. And if anyone uh, didn't have, I just thought about this, I'm sorry, if anyone didn't have enough time to actually scan the QR code for the Padlet for their questions, please let me know and I'll go back to that slide. Okay, so I'm just going to read out some of the responses that I have. I have one in chat that says, um, as a librarian, I use Scopus to find highly cited publications. 
Awesome. And then some more responses. Um, don't use it. Um, I'm new to the research realm, so not sure how to use it. Citation tracking, um, mainly to show to LIS students in terms of uh, a particular science database option. Um, okay. Yes, if you're having trouble using the Padlet or Minty, you can put things in the chat. Yeah. Okay. And then um, hopefully I'll be able to record those questions and answer them at the end. All right. So move on. Okay. So again, uh, my name is Candace Jacobs. I'm the STEM liaison librarian. And my liaison areas are biology, chemistry, slash biochemistry, computer science, GES, which is geography, environment, and sustainability, mathematics and statistics nanoscience and physics and astronomy. And I'm a graduate of both Catawba College and um, East Carolina University where I got my master's in library science. Okay, so what is Scopus? Okay, so Scopus, for those who don't know, Scopus is an abstract and citation database of peer reviewed literature, including scientific journals, books and conference proceedings. So it provides a comprehensive overview of worldwide research output in the fields of science, technology, medicine, social sciences, and arts and humanities. So as you can see, this encompasses a lot of different academic disciplines that we have on this campus. Okay, so the functions of Scopus. So folk, uh, function, uh, Scopus does have a lot of functions, um, but the ones that I'm going to be addressing in this presentation um, are actually based on uh, some of the instructional sessions that I've done as well as consultations and just the different uh, ways that people have told me that they've used Scopus and some of the functions that actually make it pretty unique um, because it's things that it houses all in one particular database. So, um, so we're going to be talking about author names, profiles, and research. So with this function, when an author's publication has been indexed in Scopus, they're able to create a free profile. And this profile can feature a list of publications, lists of their links to their publications and publication metrics, i.e. like the frequency with which their publications are cited, et cetera. And other functions include the ability to search for all publications written by an author that are featured on a database, uh, multidisciplinary research, so research that covers a variety of disciplines, um, research tips, so how to best use databases to yield the desired results, and database rankings. So this is a chart that I created that outlines the six, six of the functions in Scopus, so the ones we're going to actually be uh, discussing today. And I can send this chart out to anyone who would like it. Um, and so, also, there's also databases and databases and websites that are included here, um, and they're all of them have served similar functions as scope. It's not all of the same functions, but they're um, every all of these represent at least one of the functions that um, Scopus currently has. And so they're all all the databases are available on the library's website, and all the websites are free to create accounts for if that's necessary. And so here, this is just a screenshot is for the databases that offer you uh, or websites that offer you the author names, profiles and research function that Scopus currently has. OK, so here's a chart that outlines the six functions of Scopus that will be examined as well as um, I'm sorry. Um, these are three resources rather that offer the uh, author names, profiles, and research functions of Scopus, and, and Scopus, and they include Google Scholar, ResearchGate, and Lens.org. So this chart illustrates the features of this function that each resource has. For example, all three of them provide author profiles, two of them provide author biographies, while one only provides affiliation, only one rather provides affiliations and research interests, but all three provide a publication list and metrics to provide social media information and one provides a link to all featured publications. Give you a second to look at that. All right, so alternatives to Scopus. So 
search by author. So there are four databases I found um, that allow for searching by author. And so the reason that I, I looked at these specific databases is because I wanted to eliminate any additional barriers um, because these are all databases that we have available that are, have available for you all to use in the library. So um, it won't require that, you know, you face maybe a paywall or something like that, um, that you would maybe if you were just doing a general internet search for these different databases. Um, so four that allow searching by author are ScienceDirect, JSTOR, ProQuest, and Academic search, search Complete or EBSCO. So with this feature, you'll be able to research a, a specific author and see all of the publications written or co-written by them that are included in the specific database. Because as we know, not all databases have every single you know, article or book written by a specific author. So the difference between this feature and the author profile is that this feature specifically relates to the available research, but the author profile provides bibliographical inf or biological information about the authors, uh, a full publication list of those that are reported, affiliations, as well as metrics. So multidisciplinary. So the included multidisciplinary sources are Google Scholar, JSTOR, ProQuest, Springer Link, on, uh, Wiley Online Library, and Academic Search Complete. Now, in terms of Google Scholar, I do understand that there we can face paywalls for that, but um, there is a way uh, for those who don't know to link the Jackson Library's website to Google Scholar. Uh, so that way you can see the specific um, articles that we actually have available for free in our library. So if you don't know how to do that, you can drop it in and just let me know in the chat uh, or on, on the Padlet, and then I can give a brief demonstration. So um, I purposely, again, I purposely selected these types of resources because a multitude of disciplines utilize Scopus and may feel the weight of its absence. So I believe that most people are familiar with Google Scholar, JSTOR, uh, ProQuest, and EBSCO. But for those who are not as familiar with Springerlink and Wiley Online Library, I'll just give a brief overview. So Springerlink is a database that grants access to over 10 million uh, scientific documents in the world's uh, most complete, as they say, you know, most complete online uh, collection of science, technology and medicine, and humanities and social sciences. Um, so the resources include books, journals, reference works, and protocols cover, covering a vast range of disciplines. And Wiley Online Library is a platform for journals, books, and reference sources in a wide range of subject areas to include agriculture and um, aquaculture, business, chemistry, computer science, earth and environmental sciences, education, engineering, law, life sciences, math and statistics, um, medicine and healthcare, physics and astronomy, physical sciences, psychology, social sciences, and veterinary medicine. So that's a very exhaustive list. Um, and it contains indexing, abstracts, and tables of contents for over 1,500 journals and over 20,000 ebooks. So I just thought that was a very, very valuable source. Okay, so search tips. So um, I wanted to include this function in here because based on my interactions with students, um, search tips is a very important feature of the database. That's actually one of the biggest questions that we get asked, especially when we have instructional sessions or even uh, research consultations. Um, and I'm sure that you know we've all conducted research and found ourselves having to utilize multiple amalg amalgamations of search terms because we just weren't sure what the best uh, how to best use the database and uh, to re uh, retrieve our desired results. So um, ScienceDirect, JSTOR, ProQuest, and Wiley Online Library all provide this valuable guidance. I've used, this, I've used these products and they really are really helpful. So they have things on there, you know, that we would recognize like Boolean operators, um, tips in terms of like uh, putting um, quotation marks around certain phrases to make sure all words are included. Um, and just things like that. And also even uh, whether or not these websites will produce results for words that are singular versus plural. And if you need to use like an asterisk or something after a certain part of the word so that it gives you both options, just as an example. 
All right. And so the last slide is for database rankings. So uh, the two sources that I found are um, Google Scholar and JSTOR, and they all both offer journal rankings. So journal rankings, uh, for those who don't know, just are intended to reflect the place of a journal within its field, uh, the relative difficulty of being published in that journal, and the prestige associated with it. And journal rankings have even been introduced as an official research evaluation tool in several other countries. Okay, so now I'm gonna open the Padlet to read and just answer some questions that you all have. And again, if you had difficulty using the Padlet, please feel free to drop your questions in the chat. Okay, so. Okay, So does anyone have any questions? Oh yeah, so you can unmute yourself and ask your question, absolutely. As always, um, when we're doing something like this, slides, are they gonna be shared? Yes, they can be shared, absolutely. I wanna share with my, uh, my cohort, my classmates, my cohort. Sounds good. Thank you. Absolutely. Does anyone else have a question? Yes, I can also share the handout with the comparisons. Absolutely. Okay, so it looks like there aren't any more questions. So um, thank you guys so much for your time. And again, you can feel free to reach out to me. I put my um, email address in the chat. I'll do that again. ccjacobs at uncg.edu. So you can set up um, a consultation with me or just email me any questions that you have. Um, I actually did get asked a question via email from someone who wasn't able to attend the presentation. Um, let me see if I can find that. There we go. He said, uh, I cannot attend the, the webinar. Scopus links to the catalog to allow us to find papers. What other science databases have this link? Google Scholar, which is otherwise pretty good, does not. Um, I think he was just kind of wondering if um, any other databases actually allowed you to, well, you know, I think because we're getting rid of Scopus, uh, <laughs> it's probably best to just um, search in one of those databases or to do a general search um, on our library's uh, homepage, like in the search box for the specific article that you need to see which database actually has it. Um, Sam, do you have a another response to that? Because it seems like he's making a, this person's making a comparison between Scopus and Google Scholar and how they're kind of like more open resources. Can you repeat the question? Yes, he said, Scopus links to our catalog to allow us to find papers. What other science databases have this link? Google Scholar, which is otherwise pretty good, does not. It actually does, though, I think from what I was saying earlier about how you can actually, um, you can link Google Scholar, your Google Scholar account to our library's website. And so it'll tell you which ones, if you're looking up a journal article, which ones we actually have in our library. Yeah, so Leah yeah. said that too. Yeah, you can set mm -hmm. it up. Um, also, 
I don't, I'm not a catalog expert, but every database mm -hmm. includes links to full text. Yes. So whatever yeah. one you pick. Um, yeah, mm -hmm. so Jenny said almost all of our databases. Um, so like, for example, PubMed um, is a free indexing software, uh, but it is, as you go through the library website, it links to full text through our catalog. Yeah, I don't even know the minor exceptions. Uh, so yeah. <laughs> um, um, so yes, it, whatever database you choose to search has that yeah. feature, uh, as long as you go through the library website or a research guide or a course guide. Yes, absolutely. Um, and I, the reason I even mentioned Google Scholar is because honestly, I know a lot of people use it. Um, <laughs> so you know, that sets our, our kind of indoctrination now to Google thing. So I know the Google Scholar is is highly uh, utilized. So I wanted to, so I wanted to mention that how you can link it to the library's website. So if anyone doesn't know how to do that and wants me to give a brief demonstration, I can do that. Um, just drop that in the chat. All right, well, if, if no one has any more questions, thank you guys so much for your time. And yes, I will be sending out um, the slides. So thank you all so much. Oh, and somebody commented, I feel like in terms of discovering multidisciplinary literature in a science database, try the databases listed on the library guide for your subject area. Absolutely, absolutely. I definitely highly recommend using those. All right. Well, thank you guys so much. Um, but, for, but since we have a little extra time, oh, sure. um, the next one coming up in this webinar series is Bullet Journaling and Research by Jenny Dale on Tuesday, March 26 at 11 a.m. Um, so um, sign up for that if you get a chance. Every um, recording. And so if you've had to miss one in the past and signups are on this page. Um, you will get a link to this recording as well as a form to let us know how this went uh, in an email. So be sure to check that out. And um, like Candace said, thanks for coming. Are there any other final questions? I feel like we paused a lot, but just making sure. Okay. Well, thank you, Candace, and thank you everyone for coming. And um, have a great week, everyone. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.